Mm. We start with a cast iron skillet. I'll uh, get from Lowe's or Home Depot. We cut off the handle, because you don't need it. <laughs> you have to crush up that galena. Yeah, I like doing it by hand. That way I don't have to suck in all those fumes. Then classify it through a quarter inch screen. Ooh, look at that. Now you're gonna shake it all down. Now you need a source of carbon. Some people like to use salt. I don't like using that. We use crushed charcoal. It makes good carbon. Ooh, look at that galena. Ain't that pretty? All crushed up. You should crush it down finer than that. But for today's job, this is gonna be just fine. Next, you're gonna put in that carbon in the bottom of your cast iron skillet. Ooh, but you ain't cooking up no eggs. No, you ain't. <laughs> Smooth it all out and get it ready. Now, get your galena. Pour it in the top. Ever so gently. Ooh, looks like I'm cooking up an omelet, don't it? Mmm, yummy. <laughs> Next, you're gonna put another layer of carbon on top. That way you get all that carbon mixed in with it. Then you're gonna stir it around. Make sure every piece has got some kind of carbon next to it. Hey, hey, now dig yourself a hole, like you're looking for a gold nugget. Woo, nice and deep too. Hey, hey, I like that. All right, steel pipe. I like steel because it don't melt on the end. You're gonna put that down at a 45 degree angle. Woo, yeah. Pound that sucker in all the way down until it pops out down at the bottom. This is gonna be your ventilation pipe. It's gonna force air down in there to help accelerate the burn. Feel the burn, baby! <laughs> Ooh, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, see how that sticks out all the way down at the bottom? Ooh, I like that. Ooh, what's that, charcoal? Yeah. Pour half the bag in the bottom. Now put your galena on top. Ooh, that fits in there nice. Then put the rest of charcoal on top. Ooh, 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 yeah. Next, you're gonna take some cheap blow dryer. We got this one at Savers for five bucks. Now you're gonna light that fire. Light my fire. That's gonna oxidize all that sulfur out. Watch out for the fumes. After about an hour, you're gonna put a plug on it. Then you're gonna force air through there. And what that does is it creates higher temperatures. And with all that forced air down there, it's gonna make that carbon burn even hotter. And it's gonna create the perfect environment for reduction. You're gonna pour water on it. Woo, cool that thing down, look at that steam, yeah. <laughs> now, what you have left is reduced lead. It's got all the sulfur out of it and it's been fused together. Look how hot it got. It burned a hole in the bottom of my skillet. Now how am I supposed to make my eggs and bacon with that? Anything ain't no good no more. Ah. Ooh, look at that. That's some good looking reduced lead. It's got silver mixed in with it. And all the sulfur's been burned out. Now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the furnace. And we're gonna melt it down. Yeah! Get us some good lead. We call that pig lead. Put a little flux in there too. That flux will help get the impurities out. Start that furnace, baby, yeah! <laughs> get those impurities off the top. After you burn it, you're gonna see a lot of impurities. Watch out for those fumes, because I'll tell you what, they'll get you. Safety first. You better wear safety gear. That stuff is plenty hot. See the fumes coming off the top? Ooh, that stuff will get you. You don't want to breathe that in. Okay, now you're going to pour your lead into a mold. I like these little cookie sheets. Mm, mm, mm. They look like biscuits, don't they? But I wouldn't eat it. And when it cools, you pop them out. Dump them in the water, cool them off. Ooh, wee. Then what you have left is lead and silver. Isn't that a pretty little ingot? Mm, mm, mm. A little butter on that and I'll eat it up. It polishes up real nice. Look at that. Oh, and there's another one for you too. I like that. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to add a whole bunch of zinc. You can use pennies from 2002 or newer, which are 98% zinc. Or you can get yourself a zinc anode they use in swamp coolers. It's all zinc. Mix that together, 10 to 1 ratio. Put it in the furnace to burn. See that zinc burning around the edge? Woo, watch out, don't breathe that in. You'll get zinc shakes from that. Woo, then all the silver's up on the top there with the zinc. You're gonna get in there and you're gonna scrape it off the top. Just like that. 
All that silver's mixed in with it. Be careful. Don't be breathing in those fumes. Then you're going to gently put that off to the side. Collect it all up. Then when you're done, what you have is a conglomerate of silver that has a little bit of lead still mixed in with it and a whole bunch of zinc. So we're going to have to burn it again. Back in the crucible you go. <laughs> More flux. Get those impurities out. And we raise it up to about 1700 degrees. That's about the temperature that silver melts. And when we're done, we should have a bunch of pure silver in the bottom. I'm gonna take that and pour it into our graphite mold that's been heated. That way we don't have thermal shock and it cools nicely. Ooh, look at that silver bar. I like that. I wish that was gold. Ooh, gently now. You don't want to drop that graphite mold. Might break it. There's our silver. Mm -mm -mm. I can eat one of those. Voila! One silver bar. Yeah! I think I'll stick to gold mining. It's a lot easier. 